So up next we have Phyllis Bennis from the Institute for Policy Studies. So the amazing moral budget and the, social, the, the audit, the Institute for Policy Studies has been crucial in that process. And so I want us to give a warm welcome to Phyllis Bennis. You all look amazing tonight. What a gift to have us here together to talk about all of this, to talk about all of our movements and how they come together. That's what intersectionality means at its most profound. It's not just about the intersectionality in each of us. When we think of the intersectionality of oppression, the intersectionality of connections of each of us, it's not about that. It's about our movements and the intersectional connections of how we build movements to change the world. Our movement is global. A couple of days ago, actually yesterday, I guess, I, I, was, I was in Madrid, I flew in last night, and we spent some time with a fascinating man who was a veteran of the U.S. war in Afghanistan, although he's a Spaniard. He was wounded in the U.S. war in Afghanistan, and he came home to Madrid to lose his job, lose his house, lost everything dear to him, and he was living in a homeless encampment on a stretch of lawn between the extraordinary Prado Museum, one of the great museums of the world, and the Spanish Ministry of, of Health, Social Policy, and Inequality. And that's where they had stretched a series of tents and a huge encampment where homeless people had been living and fighting for recognition and to reclaim their dignity for more than a year. And they had signs attached to the trees for the tourists who were going to the museum to see. And one of them said, there are 12.8 million people in Spain who are poor or socially excluded. Exactly the language that we use here in the Poor People's Campaign to describe those 140 million people in this country who are poor or socially excluded. Our movement is a global movement. And the wars the wars that we wage around the world, they shape the budget that we bring home. Budgets show the morality of the person or the family or the city or the country that follows that budget. And the fact that 54 cents out of every federal discretionary dollar goes directly to the military shows our immorality. The fact that our economy is driven by war shows our immorality. When we give $3.8 billion of our tax money every year directly to the Israeli military to carry out an illegal occupation and apartheid system against Palestinians, that shows our immorality. Martin Luther King talked of the role of militarism in the context of poverty and racism, and he would have added climate if he were talking today. But that wasn't a secret. He wasn't the only one. President Eisenhower, who before he was president had been General Eisenhower, was the one who said, every gun that is made, every warship that is launched, every rocket fired signifies in the final sense a theft, a theft from those who hunger and are not fed, from those who are cold and are not clothed. This is a general who led our country to war. It was not a secret. This is a moment today, this is a moment of our movement, because of our movements, all of our movements, this is a moment when big ideas that are challenging systems, challenging systemic racism, challenging systemic environmental degradation, challenging systemic poverty and, yes, challenging capitalism and challenging war, when those movements have come together, the result is that big issues are on the agenda and are having to be addressed by the candidates, by members of Congress, by the mainstream media who never want to talk about this stuff. The big ideas, Medicare for all, a Green New Deal, free college education, this is stuff that was never talked about in the big 
the bigness of their ideas. But right now, those are being talked about. And all of those issues face the same response. Well, that's a good idea, but how are you going to pay for it? Well, one way is to raise taxes on the rich and corporations. And the other way is to stop sending a budget of $750 billion this year directly to the military to move around the world, setting up 800 international bases that are designed to kill people, to destroy the environment, to impose poverty on people around the world. It's stripping money from what we need here at home, and it's being used to slaughter people in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Syria, in Libya, in Somalia, potentially in Iran, in devastating wars that destroy people just like us. And of course, just like us, those policies and those wars impact poor people more than anyone else. The th call in the moral budget of the Poor People's Campaign is to cut $350 billion, $350 billion out of the military budget. What does that mean? Frankly, we might as well say a gazillion dollars. None of us have ever seen $350 billion. None of us have ever seen $350 billion anything. I mean, really, we don't know what a billion looks like, right? But what's true is that amount of money could be used for other things. I was looking tonight at the National Priorities Project website that tells you how much money each part of our country is spending on illegal wars, wars that violate international law, that violate our Constitution, and that are doing nothing but stripping money and killing more people. And here's what I found just from the state of North Carolina. $16 billion just for their share of the military budget this year. That could pay for 258,377 elementary school teachers. What makes us safer? What makes us safer? Finally, the question of how we think about these wars, how we think about where war fits with racism and poverty and militarism. These are not just wars in the history books. These are wars against real people, most often brown people and black people and Muslim people. They are people just like us. And we have to come back to what Dr. King told us about war spending, about a military economy, when he said a nation that continues year after year to spend more money on the military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual doom. That's what we are fighting against. Not only spiritual doom, I'm not a minister, if you couldn't tell, but my closest friends include ministers. What we are fighting against are wars that are destroying the environment, destroying our economy, imposing racism, and that are doing nothing to keep us safer. We have a lot of fighting to do. Thank you.